Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we'll be going live with our Wednesday message here shortly. And I'd just like to say what a wonderful day it is. God gave us another day of, day of life. And, you know, we're, it's a blessing that he wakes us up every morning. And I'm going to give some people some time to get on and... all that good stuff but uh hope everybody's had a wonderful day today and you know looks like we've got some snow coming but lord knows what we need it may not be our plan but it's always his plan and the lord has laid on my heart psalms 13 if if you just want to follow along but um you know today is the day the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it before I start, I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. And as always, if, you know, if anybody has any prayer requests or anything, they can message them to us or, you know, just need anything. We do a lot of ministry work and of that sort of thing. And if anybody needs food in these hard times or, you know, just general help, reach out and let us know. But I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again, Lord, and we just thank you for this beautiful day and this opportunity to come together once again, Lord. Lord, we ask that you go with us through the rest of the week and lead us and guide us in all that we do, Lord. Lord, we ask that you take your word and send it out and let it accomplish what it was set forth to do because you said it would not return to you void, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless this message, Lord, and let it touch somebody in need. We give you the praise and glory and the honor for it all. For Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Psalms 13 reads like this. How long wilt thou forgive me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him, and thou that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Lord, lay that scripture on my heart to go with this message today. And as the title says, God does his best work in dark times. We're, we're facing very dark times today, and some more than others. And, you know, it seems like everywhere we, we go, there's darkness all around us. But I'm here to tell you today that there's hope and there's mercy. Because God does his best work in the darkness. Now you say, preacher, what do you mean by that? I mean, we can go all the way back to Genesis chapter 1 and look, and it said that there was darkness and nothing else, and that's where God began his work was in the darkness to create everything we see today, and it started in darkness, and you may be facing a dark time today, you may be facing such things as divorce, cancer, COVID, or loss of a loved one, or just temptations and trials. But I'm here to tell you today that God does his best work with you in the darkness. And I can give you another example of that. When you conceive a child or are expecting a child, that child is grown in darkness. And what I mean by that is they're grown in the womb. And it is dark in that womb. And that child starts to grow and be formed into what God wants it to be. God starts that in the darkness. And he works. And he keeps it in that darkness until it's ready to come out into the light and into this world. That's one of the most precious works of God is seeing a child be born. And that's 
all I can explain about that is it's a work of God seeing a child be born. I mean, it's, it's a miracle. And God does his best work in the darkness. Now today we, we look out into this world and we see such darkness surrounding us all. And I'm telling you that God does his best work during these dark times. I believe in the next year or so, we're going to see a great revival spring up from this darkness. You see, right now, God is forming his warriors in these dark times. Just as he forms the child in a dark womb, he forms his children in dark times. Who is going to rise up and stand for him? I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know how dark it may be today for you. But I promise if you can hold on and hang on to God's word, that he has not left you nor forsaken you. He is just doing some of his best work with you in these dark times. And you say, well, I can't see that. You will with time. You may rise up and see just how strong you are. God may be forming something inside of you that you didn't even know that was there. But it takes dark times for to rise up and form what God wants. And you may be witness miracles here in the next couple of years or so. I don't know where you may be in this life or what you may be doing. But if you are in a dark time, just know that God works in dark times. Now, another example of this, it talks about seeds all through the Bible. And I'm going to refer back to a literal seed. You know, we take, I'll just take a grain of corn as an example. We take it and we bury it in the earth and cover it. And it spends its time in darkness until it becomes a sprout and sprouts up into the light when it is ready. And God makes it that way. God takes his work and forms that seed and makes it grow in the dark until he says it is ready to begin the journey of what he has set forth for it to do. There's hope in these dark times. There's, there's nothing to fear because if God be for you, who can be against you? And today I'm offering a message of hope and of peace and of love because that's what God wants for us all. He wants us to know that we are not alone in this darkness and that he is still in control. And he is taking us and molding us and forming us in the way that he needs us to be today. And I truly believe he's using this dark times to raise up Davids again. There may be little Davids now. And this darkness, when these, those Davids emerge from what God is doing, this darkness cannot prevail against it. It says in the Bible, it says, if God be for you, who can be against you? And that includes darkness. You know, we all fight depression, or at least I have in my life. And that can be some of the darkest times of your life. And I've dealt with a lot of suicides and different things from depression in my life with different family members and close friends. And if you let it, if you forget God, if you turn your back on God, if you say he ain't there with you, darkness can overcome you if you let it. But we have to hang on to God's every word and know that he is with us every step of the way and he is carrying us when we need carried. Church, today the, the darkness seems so overwhelming, it's all that we can see. But I promise God's plan is still in effect today. God hasn't left us, and he never will. It says in the Bible that the God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that is true. God was, will always be there with us. If there's any change in done, it's in us, ourselves. If we have laid Christ down somewhere along the way, 
we need to go back to where we laid that cross because he's still right there. He didn't leave us. We left him. We need to go get that cross and pick it back up and keep on the trucking because great things is going to come out of these dark times. We may be in a whole world revival before we know it. I just want to give you the message of hope that Jesus is still King of Kings. He is still Lord of Lords. He is still coming back. Everything in this Bible is true from cover to cover. And it tells me that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he will always be there. Sometimes we just have to reach up and feel for him. Sometimes it can feel like we are alone in the darkness because we can't see anything else but the darkness. But I promise if you just reach up and feel for him, he's there. And he, he may very well be carrying you and you don't even know it. The Lord has never left me and he never will. He's pulled me through some of the darkest times of my life. And I thank him for it. But if you are going through darkness today and don't know where to turn, if you feel like you have left Jesus or you don't know him, and you feel like you're alone in the darkness, I urge you today to make the decision to know him so you will never have to be alone again. I urge you today because today is the day of salvation. It says in the Bible, today is the day. And if you feel the Holy Spirit tugging on your heartstrings, if you can feel that knock, on your heart. I urge you just to let him in because there's no greater peace and joy in knowing of where your heavenly home is and know that you are not alone in this darkness today. Satan is seeking about whom he may devour and that's what he's doing today. But Jesus also came to seek and save that which was lost and he is still in the saving business. And I urge you today, if you don't know him, come to him, lay your cares upon him. He will be your light in the darkness. And I hope this message has touched somebody today. And like I said, if anybody needs anything, to please reach out to my ministry page or my personal Facebook page and just let us know. We'll, we'll do what we can. That's what we're here for. That's the only way we're going to get to heaven is to help each other and this this word in my heart and this word in my life is not for me to hide it is to be shared throughout the whole world and I hope you have or I hope that you enjoyed this today I know I did and I know it's been a help to me even if I was preaching to myself and just know that there is hope in the darkness because God does his best work in the dark. We thank you and we'll be praying for you and you pray for us. And we will see you again um, Sunday around three o'clock and I hope everybody is doing well and I'll be praying. We thank you.